combined gas law, taking an opportunity to do a Boyle's law, which we know is an inverse relationship, PV equal PV. Charles law, V over T equal V over T, and Gay-Lussac's law with P over T equal P over T. Holding all variables into the equation allows us to show the inverse relationship between pressure and volume and the direct relationship between pressure, temperature, and volume and temperature. In these series of examples, we're allowing all three variables to change and pull out the missing variable. So we'll be given five of the six numbers, and just with some algebra, we'll go through and make sure we solve for the sixth variable. Couple of items we have to remember. Temperature always in the Kelvin scale, so that's just always, always in our gas law chapter. It doesn't matter what unit the pressure is, just that they're the same unit, and that's true for the volumes as well. They just have to be the same. But temperature must be in a Kelvin. When we look at our first example, let me read through, and, and as we get ready, and I read through, every time I see a number, I just start to assign it a variable. It says we have a volume of a gas-filled balloon, and the volume is 30 liters. So I'm going to call that my V1, 30 liters. Its temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, but I know I won't be able to use that, so I'm going to add 273, and I'm just going to convert that right now into a Kelvin unit. So my 40, whoops, adding 273 gives me a 313 Kelvin unit. And the pressure is assigned for us as 153 kilopascals. So my first sentence has given us V1, 30 liters, T1 in a Kelvin, 313, and P1 is 153 kilopascals. We'd like to know what the new volume would be. So there's our target is V2. When the balloon has a standard temperature and pressure, well, even though these are words, standard temperature and pressure, they're actually numbers as well. STP could also be a way that we see that written in a problem. Standard temperature and standard pressure will become the values that we use for T2 and P2. Standard temperature in a Kelvin unit we know to be 273 Kelvin units. And all I have to do is match the pressure unit in its standard value. Since P1 was given in a KPA, I'm going to use 101.3 and match the standard pressure in a kilopascal. So we're given five of the six numbers. We're ready to just plug them into the combined gas law and knowing our target here will be volume. Pressure one, 153 kilopascals times our first volume of 30 liters set over our Kelvin unit, 313K. The pressure is now adjusted to the standard value of 101.3. We'd like to know the new volume and temperature now at its standard condition of 273 Kelvin units. Now in terms of the amount of work, all I really need to see is just the setup and like a final answer. But I like to just, as we begin, I start assigning variables and make comments about why we're assigning them, making sure you see how we've converted to Kelvin. The key sequence here, and I'll just put this on a separate sheet so we don't put it in the notepad, but to pull out V2, we always start by cross multiplying the side without the variable. So just looking at key sequence to pull out this uh, V2 variable, we start with 153 times 30, then come down to the 273. That's a 7. And then remember in a parenthesis, we divide by the other two numbers. Without that parenthesis, we'll get a calculator error. So key sequence would have us hit 153 times 30 times 273, and then when I divide by, I always use that parenthesis there, I get my 313 times the standard pressure, close the parenthesis, you'll get a calculator error, and it looks like our new volume, and I'll come back and just put that on the notepad page, 39.52, put a liter in, and a liter comes out. So 39.52 liters, the new volume of our gas, Given five of the six variables, we simply cross multiply, pulling out for our missing variable. 
Psych example 2 will be very similar. I'll read it through if you just follow along. It says a gas has a pressure. So let's assign that a P1, 155 kPa's. Temperature is 25 Celsius degrees. I'm just going to convert that right away into a Kelvin. And that came out as 298 Kelvin units. So I'll just go ahead and put that as T1, changing 25 into the Kelvin unit. And our first volume there is 1 liter. We change the volume. The gas pressure has gone up to 605 kPa units. So the pressures are matching. That's a good sign. We don't need to adjust any pressure units. And the temperature has uh, gone down to 125. Temperature is raised to 125. So 125 and 273, we're going to need to put in the Kelvin unit, 398K. So instead of just writing down Celsius degree as I did in the previous example, I just converted right away into the Kelvin. And again, this part of it, I don't have to see that. It's just helpful to see where I'm plugging numbers in. In our first pressure, we have 155 kPa's. Its volume was given as 1 liter. Set over our temperature of 298 Kelvin units. We'd like to know the new volume. Pressure has gone to 605 kPa's. And the new temperature of 398 Kelvin. So same target, we're going to pull out for V2. And key sequence, we just cross multiply the side that does not have the variable first. So I hit 155 times 1 times 398. I'm going to divide by the product of 298 and 605 in a parenthesis. Our new volume. 0.34 liters. And just a comment, in the problem we have units and in the answer we have units, but with these particular problems there is no label, there is no um, last step that we're used to writing, like the of what part, there's no chemical formula, so it's just a number and a unit as we solve these particular gas problems. Ready? Let's keep the good work going. We have uh, two more examples I'd like to work, but let's read them one through at a time. Top of our next page, we see the third example of a combined gas law. We have a volume given to us as 5 liters. And the sample is at a temperature of negative 50 degrees Celsius. So when I hit negative 50 in my calculator, I just do negative 50 plus the 273. And we can see that it's cold, 223 Kelvin units. And the pressure is 107 kPa's. We'd like to know the new pressure when the temperature has been raised to 102 and the volume has expanded to 7 liters. Now I didn't write 102 because I thought I would just convert and write the Kelvin unit, 375. Alrighty, so we have a new target. Last two examples we looked for volume. Here we're going to be looking for pressure. So I've got my P1, V1, T1. Let me get those plunked in. We have 107 kPa's. Volume 1, 5 liters. And our first temperature, 223 kelvins. Target is our new pressure. Volume expanded to 7 liters. Temperature warmed to, oops, that's supposed to be a kelvin there, isn't it? 375 kelvin units. Alrighty, we're going to pull out for P2 the new pressure. Same strategy, we cross multiply the side without the variable, so our key sequence would show us hitting 107 times 5 times 375, and I'll divide by the product of 223 and 7 in a parenthesis. Our new pressure, 128.5, let's see, we put a kPa in, so that's the matching unit for pressure 2. And we'll do one more together in our lesson, example 4. We have a given mass of air with a volume of 6 liters. Its pressure is given as 101 kilopascals. 
What's the new volume when the pressure is dropped to 25 kPa's? Oh, nice word clues. The temperature does not change. So I'm glad I read that through first. Temperature does not change. Boy, that's not necessarily the combined gas law at all. I only have four variables. T would drop out. So if I'm just thinking that through, if the combined gas law, we know the relationship PV over T equal PV over T. And all of a sudden at the end, I realize temperature didn't change. We just drop that out, and it ends up to be a Boyle's law problem. Some people last hour, and it was a great strategy, they put standard temperature in, 273 on both sides, and they got the same answer, obviously, because it's held constant. So if you want to just worry about one formula, PV over T, and if you read something constant, put in the standard value, that's a great strategy. Or in my mind, I go, okay, well, that's just going to drop out because it didn't change. The algebra says it will just cancel. It ends up to be a Boyle's Law, PV equal PV. Our units for pressure match, so we're good to just plug in. Our pressure 1 times volume 1 divided by our second pressure, and we'll pull out the new volume. Knowing that pressure went down, our volume, I suspect, goes up. So I'm looking for a value bigger than 6. 101 times 6 divided by 25. And our new volume, 24.24. .24. Let's see, put a liter in so the liter comes out. Alrighty. I'm going to stop the lesson here and just give us a chance to talk about it. Mm.